you guys ready for another performer? Yeah, you are. All right, you guys, get excited for Olive Lynch. Yeah! All right. Olive Lynch genuinely didn't understand what the big deal was about midi-chlorians. She thought they were fine or whatever. <laughs> she is also a stand-up comedy dork, which is at least like 12 parsecs lamer than being a Star Wars nerd. When she isn't hurting nerfs, she hosts the Speakeasy Open Mic Sundays at 10 on Edgewood. Everybody, give it up for Olive Lynch. <laughs> Woo. How about that? Um, so you guys, I want you to file this in the way of the back of your head for the rest of my set. Uh, that was the only piece of Star Wars media I saw until I was 20. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it. Um, if you're not familiar with this 1985 made-for-TV gem, uh, it is a... Uh, it's a classic, it is Ewoks The Battle of Endor, and it's, uh, it's actually sequel to the 1984 made-for-TV film, Caravan of Courage, An Ewok Adventure. Um, <laughs> you guys remember now, right? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, a Caravan was also a straight-to-TV release in America. In Europe, it had a theatrical release, because you know they're way more into those little indie art house films over there. <laughs> um, so this, the, both of the movies are about this... Uh, this little uh, five-year-old space girl named Sindel and her, uh, her space family, space mom, space dad, space brother. Um, in the first movie, they crash land on Endor and, uh, you know, meet the Ewoks, fight some monsters, learn some lessons. The whole movie ends with them dancing around a fire and singing, as you do, uh, which is great. Next year, the sequel comes out. Uh, in that movie, um, which is the trailer you just saw. Uh, it picks up right where the first movie left off, uh, and except for uh, in the first five minutes, everyone from the first movie, except for D Sindel, is shot to death. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, bold choice, Lucas. Gotta uh, salute you. Uh, you know, it, don't worry, all the executions happen off camera because, you know, the kids, it's for the kids. Murder's not scary if you don't see it. <laughs> Christ. Uh, other than that, pretty much the same movie. Uh, she meets more Ewoks, battles some more monsters, learns some more lessons, and dancing fire, you're done. Great. Um, gotta say, throughout the whole thing, really a lot more chipper than you think you would be when your whole family was murdered, but, you know. She's a trooper, that Sindel. <laughs> I love how restrained the title uh, is when they're, uh, when the trailer, really, when it's describing it, rather. Because um, it's not like, from people who brought you Return of the Jedi, or from the minds, it's, uh, it's in the tradition of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> you know, similar. It's a similar thing. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like the phrase, hey girl, let me get up in them guts, is, is kind of based on the medieval tradition of eviscerating pregnant women for sport. Uh, <laughs> but like a movie for kids! <laughs> Wikipedia, y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> So, also the movie version is like a, the, the trailer is like a clashes of near epic proportions. We're not gonna, <laughs> epic-ish, uh, sort of epic. We tried really hard, you guys. We spent a lot of money. All right, also the top billed actor in this film is Wilford Brimley. <laughs> he is carrying this movie. <laughs> you know, kids, it's Wilford Brimley from Cocoon. You know Cocoon. <laughs> Cocoon's Wilford Brimley. Come on, kids. They probably just decided to film it one afternoon and Wilford was just closest to wherever the set was. Also, I don't know if you noticed, he's just like wearing normal clothes. <laughs> he's just a hat, good. Uh, <laughs> Real talk, did this have to be a movie? I feel like this could have just been a trailer for a board game and it wouldn't. <laughs> Would have been exactly the same. Okay. Uh, you also might have noticed uh, Cher, the space witch. Um, 
She turns into a bird a lot in that movie. Uh, which is like, I guess they just decided, eh, Star Wars has magic now. Uh, which uh, also, fucking don't tell me it's the Force, because why wasn't it in the, any of the other movies? And riddle me this, you guys. If people can just turn into birds willy-nilly, why weren't they? You may be like, hey, Olive, how would have that made the first movies better? How could it not? <laughs> You're in a lightsaber battle, turn into a bird, fly away. Brilliant. What if the guy fighting them turns into a bird? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of movie would that be? A better movie. <laughs> More birds. <laughs> also, if one of you guys explains, or if one of you guys after comes up and tells me that like this was all explained in one of the novelizations, I swear to God. <laughs> all right, so like I said, cards on the table. I saw this movie as a kid, um, as a little, little thing. One of the first movies I remember seeing, and uh, I didn't see the first one, just the one that starts with the massacre, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, and when, also, when you see a movie as a kid that's like confusing or upsetting, your first thought isn't like, oh, this is a bad script. It's that, uh, oh, fuck, is this what the world is like? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, it's not even what Star Wars is like. <laughs> but like I said, other than this, I didn't see a single other Star Wars movie. I, I mean, okay, uh, <laughs> I did sneak into Revenge of the Sith with this boy named Trevor, and like he tried to finger me, but he couldn't really figure it out. And then security asked us to leave, so I don't count that. <laughs> But other than that, uh, not, not anything else. So uh, needless to say, my understanding of George Lucas' oeuvre is a little warped. Um, yeah, I never watched it, uh, the original trilogy or the prequels. But um, here's the thing. Even if you haven't seen Star Wars, you've fucking seen Star Wars. Like, it's just, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It has completely permeated our culture and our media. It is like the air around us which is why I never quite understood the idea of Star Wars nerds, because it's like, how can you... It's like, oh, I was into breathing before everyone else was doing it. <laughs> Star Wars nerds my age, I mean. I... <sighs> it just makes no sense. You love that thing that pretty much everyone else on the planet is like, yeah, it's really good, it's really cool. It's like, at this point, I don't know, I feel like being a Star Wars fan is as culturally transgressive as being into sports. <laughs> yeah. Fight me! <laughs> Don't fight me, I'm really bad at sports. <sighs> okay, so I was reading, did you know that they've estimated that the combined running time of every Star Wars parody, reference, pastiche, homage, and news story, if you combine all of their running times, it is over 20,000 hours? <laughs> 20, that's 800 days, it's over 800 days. Which is especially crazy when you consider that I just made that number up. <laughs> and you guys all believed it. Because it's plausible! <laughs> hmm. All right, so, um, here's the thing. Even all of that being said, the fact that I hadn't technically like watched Star Wars ended up being sort of part of my identity growing up. Like, it kind of made me feel a little bit cool, you know? Because, like, I don't know. It's not totally unique, but it's like having a flip phone in 2015. Like, you're out there, but... <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> so, uh, movie theaters and Trevor's and Finkers aside, uh, <laughs> for a while, I wasn't the luckiest in love. I uh, didn't do super great. Um, had a lot of bad luck dating. Ended up with a couple of real greedos, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Greedo is the one that steals your refund check and buys cocaine, right? <laughs> hmm. Maybe more of a salacious B. Crumb. They had a similar vibe. Uh, <laughs> deep cut. Uh, <laughs> All right, so um, before I go any farther into this uh, thing, I do want to, uh, you, might, you might already tell that this is gonna be like a love story. Um, 
and it is. Uh, but spoiler alert, just so you're aware, um, it, is a, it's a, it's, it is about a love story, but it's about a love story that has ended. Um, so we don't end up together in the end, but don't ah, don't cry. it's fine, just listen, okay. Um, just because you already know the ending of something doesn't mean you can't enjoy the ride, you know? Like, you guys all knew that Darth Vader was Luke's dad before you saw Empire, like you all did. You know, they, I don't know, like, Luke should have seen that one coming. Vader means father. <laughs> weren't, any, uh, weren't any language classes up at Tatooine High, Luke? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of you, some of you did maybe not know, like, did anyone here see that in theaters? Anyone over 40 here? <laughs> mm -hmm. Who let you out? <laughs> it's past your bedtime. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, I just like, you guys know that women age in dog years and like the thought of 30 is throwing me off, so like imagining being 40 just terrifies me. It's kind of like the Ewok movie, I don't understand it. <laughs> it's scary. Um, so anyway, Dayton wasn't going good. Kind of clueless, never knew which of my friends wanted to be with me in a romantic way, and which of my friends, you know, did not want that at all. And I just said, never had any idea what was going on, never had any clue, like you could literally be penetrating me and be like, what does this mean? <laughs> where, are we, where are we going with this? Uh, I don't know, I really envy people back in the olden days who like, if you were a gentle sir who liked a lady, you guys just both learned this dance and you would do it, you'd do a little turn and like a curtsy and hat thing. And then like you both knew that meant like, hey, I wanna touch your butt. And I don't know, I, I feel like I give up my right to vote for that kind of clarity. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, but turns out you can just join OkCupid and it's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I was really into, really into that, and everything was structured and labeled and clear, and I was all about it. I joined OkCupid, I loved it. The only thing I didn't like was the questions. Like, OkCupid asks a lot of weird questions that I think are kind of insulting. Like, the first question that OkCupid asked me was, do you make your bed every morning? <laughs> Shut up, OkCupid, you're not my mom. <laughs> my mom makes my bed every morning. <laughs> Live at home, y'all. Uh, the next question it asked me was, do you enjoy having intellectual conversations with people? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I guess. But like anyone who uses the word intellectual to describe themselves as a turd sandwich. Um, <laughs> the last question it asked me was like, have you ever eaten anything out of the garbage? I went to college. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, so here's where our story really begins, and it begins as most stories do with a boy, thanks patriarchy. Um, <laughs> so in 2009, the boy, capital B, uh, sent me a message on OkCupid and I sent one back. It was awesome. Uh, we really clicked. He was in all the same stuff I was. He loved Neil Gaiman, I loved Neil Gaiman, I loved Joss Whedon, he loved Joss Whedon way more than I did. <laughs> and that was weird. Um, we ended up writing to each other like every day for a couple months and it was great, but eventually, as it always did, my Star Wars boycott came up. And he, like any red-blooded American nerd male, took umbrage, uh, which is not the Harry Potter character, it's a word. <laughs> Just look it up later, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so he, like he, like many before him, tried to convince me. He, he laid out its cultural significance, its value, its personal resonance with him, and yet I was unmoved. But then, he didn't give up. And Reynolds gave up, he did not. What he did was ended up making the first truly compelling argument I had ever heard for it, and he did it in song. He wrote a song. Can you even like comprehend what that was like getting? Anyway, I, I thought the best way to honor this like incredi incredibly meaningful and intimate artifact 
from both of our lives was to make a stupid video of it and then show it to 100 strangers. Um, so uh, you guys want to see it? Okay. Bear in mind that the song was written by a musician with talent and the video was made by a beginner with Final Cut. So just hear it. Play that beautiful bean footage. That first viewing, it turned into a relationship, and that relationship lasted five years. Uh, but it is, uh, thank you, it is now over. Um, and yeah, so what happened? Uh, well, it's complicated. <laughs> um, you know, when you're young, you think that relationships are simple because, like Star Wars, they're everywhere. And so you think you understand them. You think that. Your problems are gonna be big and clear and identifiable, you know? Like a Death Star with like a shadowy father figure piloting it at the helm. And then sometimes you meet the guy's dad and he's fine. He fixes your car for free, it's not a big deal. And I think love is a lot more like the prequels when you think about it. I know there's a lot of stuff going on and uh, seemingly like, irrelevant details end up mattering a lot. You can't remember why. And you can't really pin it down. And you don't actually understand anyone's motivation, really. And space taxes end up being way more important than you thought that they would be. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe like at first you thought you wanted like a scrappy Jedi Knight, but then, you know, you start thinking about like what would it be like to have like this robot general with like four lightsabers and spinning arms and admittedly is probably not a good idea on paper or in practice, but you got to try it. How else will you know? Anyway. (sighs) Then maybe like one year you get really into video games. I'm talking about Attack of the Clones. That movie was basically a video game. (laughs) You just couldn't control it. And then the next thing you know, the movies are over and you don't really, you're not really sure what happened (laughs) or why, Uh, but they are. Um, so you uh, so you move on, and you, know, you both start watching other movies, uh, you know. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that you you don't still value Star Wars. I mean, yeah, when you're 20, you can't really understand Paul Thomas Anderson, but then you get older and you're like, hey, maybe I want to check out Inherent Vice or start doing drugs. <laughs> Same sentence. <laughs> All right, um, but anyway, like Star Wars. It's always going to be Star Wars, you know? It's always going to be your Star Wars. And, you know, maybe you and Star Wars, like, you hang out sometimes. Like, you go over to Star Wars' house, and you smoke a bowl, and you watch Cosmos because you're both still dorks. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Star Wars lives with your best friend now. Actually, he does. Uh, <laughs> and I guess in this analogy, she would be, uh, I guess, uh, Pride and Prejudice. She would be A&E's six-part miniseries, Pride and Prejudice, starring Colin Firth. Oh, my God. Colin Firth, you guys? <sighs> what was I talking about? Oh, right. Someone who changed my life. Okay. Um, so, anyway, it's like... Ultimately, Star Wars deserves to be with a real Star Wars nerd, you know? Like, someone who gets who Max Rebo is and can tell the difference between the original and the special editions, because I never really could. And... <laughs> I don't know. It's just like that damn Ewok movie when you really think about it. It was part of this huge, amazing universe of storytelling and, and, and characters, but like you just weren't equipped to really get it at the time. You never, you never checked out the other shit. And then it's over. Um, so in case this metaphor is getting too stupid, uh, I'm just going to be very clear at this point. Um, <laughs> sometimes things don't work out, you know? And it's just not your destiny, but I'm just. <laughs> but like I said, there's only one real Star Wars, and whether or not you realized it at first, Star Wars kind of made you who you are. You know, it made you better, it taught you, it challenged you, changed you. And without it, you know, <sighs> there would be so many different things that you wouldn't have, like, okay. All the designers who worked on the original Star Wars, uh, on the puppets and Yoda, ended up forming the Jim Henson Creature Company, which is responsible for so many other amazing movies that like, were always something that I was into. And like, we wouldn't have that without it. And I don't know, it's like, I'm gonna wrap things up. Again, I'm gonna go back to the metaphor because it's more comfortable. Mm. I never want to go back to being too cool for Star Wars, you know? But at the end of the day, I'm like Labyrinth. (laughs) But you'll always be Star Wars. And we'll always have Endor. Thanks, y'all. gathered in this fancy basement to talk about a random space movie made 40 years ago. (laughs) Well, that seems like a weird-ass thing to do. Well, it's not Plan 9 from Outer Space. It has nothing to do with killer clowns. It's motherfucking stones. It's motherfucking stones.